Hey there, YouTubers. All right, so userbenchmark.com bench for my Intel Celeron 10th Gen G5900. This is the only place you're going to see this bench, folks, because uh, it is not available on their uh, website yet uh, as far as doing comparisons. So I will uh, compare this to the past G4900, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. Uh, I'll do a full review at some point, but uh, this is kind of a warm-up. So you see the scoring there, gaming 63%, desktop 104, workstation 57. Um, I have to believe the other components in this computer are carrying this thing. Now, this is not a computer, or excuse me, a CPU that you're going to buy this, you know, 4133 megahertz RAM and just, you know, smoke everything. Um, nor do you want to buy a ridiculously good graphics card because uh, you'll have bottlenecking issues. So I paired this with one of my uh, mid-level cards, the RX 590, which is a you know pretty good gamer, I will say. So this computer, you know, paired with uh, 16 gigs of RAM, that graphics card, um, I forget which solid state drives in here, but it's it's probably a Samsung EVO 970 or or something like that. If you're out there, Samsung, go ahead and uh, sponsor me. I buy you your guys' crap all the time, and I love it. So with those components, you see what this thing does, and it's it's respectable, right, as far as this website goes. Now, what is the reality? Um, let's talk about that. So here is the scoring for the Intel Celeron G5900. You see um, the single-core score you know, not terrible, terrible, uh, the dual core score. And then after that, because it's a two core, two thread, it's, it's really not even worth talking about. Base clock speed, 3.4 gigahertz. It says turbo here, but this CPU, as far as I know, does not have Intel Turbo Boost technology. So it's staying at 3.4 gigahertz for the rest of its life. Now, let's talk... Um, in case you want to see the RX 590 numbers, this is the XFX, available for, I think it was 170 bucks or 180 Darn good price for this graphics card. Um, definitely uh, was uh, surprised for that price that I got it for. Now, is this a gamer? It might be at 720p, low settings, medium. I don't know. I'm not sure I'm ever going to try that. 1080p low while I did get some uh, decent FPS there's a lot of uh, drop frames um, things that you don't really see when you've got a good CPU paired with this kind of graphics card um, it just it just felt like there was a lot of lag and, and it, like it just couldn't make its mind up now recording and having MSI Afterburner on the screen, you know, may may have done it in, right? So if I played this thing without those things, um, maybe it would be a little better. Would it be, you know, something that I would recommend to anybody? I don't believe I would. Now, um, if you were to build a computer with this thing, you could uh, build it pretty cheap, right? Because uh, the cheapest... CPU out there is 10th gen is the i3-10-100, 122, so this comes in $80 cheaper. Um, but is there any way to bridge that gap? Um, and there really isn't. The uh, 10-100 is a superior CPU um, in line with some of the i5s in the 8th and 9th generation. So that said, that's what I had for scores. Let's compare it to... Um, some other ones so let's just remember these two these two scores here and do our comparison now I've got the uh, Pentium Gold G5400 and the Celeron 4900 both eighth uh, generation so you can see both of the or excuse me the one on the left is two cores four threads which is going to make a difference and the one on the right is two cores two threads you see where they're ranked, um, their abysmal scores. 
So you see here, first score 104. Um, and I've already forgotten what that one was, 105. So surprisingly, that single core is higher than the Pentium Gold G5400. Now the two core score, 182, that is uh, also lower. So in some aspects, there will be some things that the new Celeron does better than that Pentium Gold uh, that's priced at $62. Now, looking at the last, uh, the 8th gen version of the Celeron, you can see um, considerable improvement. And whether that, you know, is 20% better is another story, but it is significant. So there you go, folks. That's kind of uh, where where this thing is, somewhere between a G5400 and a Celeron 4900. Uh, in some aspects, better than the 5400, and a lot of aspects worse. So. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe.